Hi, I'm Mike. Last week we put out a video about the drought. Uh, it's the worst drought that we've seen here in 127 years. And we got a ton of feedback and an incredible amount of concern, including people that wanted to help in a number of ways. So we asked ourselves, how can you help? Not only our ranch, but farms and ranches all over that will not survive without some sort of change. That's coming up today on our Wyoming Life. Severe weather, falling commodity prices, political polarization, trade wars, and vertical integration along with factory farming. These are just a few of the factors that have led to farm bankruptcy raising more than 50% of normal in the last few years. For some, not even bankruptcy will help. And tens of thousands have stopped farming altogether. With the U.S. losing more than 200,000 farms in the last 10 years, in fact, in the U.S., three acres of farmland are lost per minute. That's 178, 175 acres per hour and over 15 million acres of land in the last 10 years. Most of that loss, it's no surprise, comes from urban expansions, cities and suburbs. But what may be really surprising is that 41% actually comes from rural development. Those moving out of the cities to claim their five acres or 40 acres out in the country. It's even happening here. People selling their houses and property in the cities, coming to places like Wyoming and plopping down cash for small acreages, usually pay paying well over asking price and putting in farmers and ranchers in a, in a really awkward position of selling their land at a profit. Now, I learned a term uh, when we first came to the ranch. We left our corporate jobs. We came to the ranch really not knowing anything about the cattle or farming industry. And this term really didn't make a whole lot of sense at the time. But now, years later, after seeing the ups and downs, it finally really starts to make sense. That term was first spoken to me uh, by my father-in-law, Gilbert, whose family homesteaded here and eventually led us to the ranch. He once told me that uh, everybody thought he was rich, but in reality, he was land rich and cash poor. Now that didn't make any sense to me at the time. It was like having a thousand dollars in the bank and not being able to buy an ice cream cone. But having land is having money. Here's the rub and the spot where I get into the most arguments about this with, uh, with people. But for most farmers and ranchers, land isn't about money. It's about legacy about family and it's about responsibility. That's why most farmers and ranchers, if they have to sell land, even a small part of it, it's kind of the end or the beginning of it. In fact, it happened right here on this ranch over 50 years ago. A portion of the ranch was sold off to a developer. That developer then took that piece of the ranch and subdivided it and sold it for upwards of $100,000 for a five acre plot made thousands, also putting a subdivision right next to the ranch. That was before Gilbert even owned this place that we're on now. Uh, but it may have actually led to him being able to buy it in foreclosure a few years later. Luckily, Gilbert was able to buy it and to continue to ranch on it, continuing the legacy and the heritage of those that actually did homestead here instead of tearing down barns like this one and the history of this area. Even so, Farm and ranch families may be facing extinction all over the U.S. And right here, it could be uh, this historic drought here in Wyoming that wipes us off the map. Because while it may be termed land rich and cash poor, it really just equates to having money in the bank, in the currency of land. But to spend that currency, you have to make some hard decisions, mostly about the legacy and the heritage and the honor of those that came before you. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this, I'm going to put a link down in the description from the American Farmland Trust. It's called uh, The Farms Under Threat Report, and it's really interesting reading as we're probably going to kind of circle around back to it here in just a little bit. But right now, I thought that we need to move on to what we can actually do about it, both uh, producers and as consumers who care about where their food comes from and the families behind that food. You'll notice I'm just moving around the barn here because it's really, really hot outside. 
<laughs> I can't see anything, it's bright and uh, cameras don't like to work. But since our last video, I've gotten a lot of emails and that's what I wanted to talk about. Everything ranging from people with suggestions on how to improve soil conditions to people offering to actually give us hay to help feed the herd over the next months. And that's what I wanna talk about uh, those, you know, those issues. Now, those that know how to fix the soil and have solutions for how to grow more hay or grass or pasture, I mean, right now, um, soil really isn't our problem. Rain is. Our drought continues. We've, uh, we only get one cutting of hay per year. After that cutting, the grass doesn't keep growing and we don't get a second or a third or even fourth cutting of hay. Uh, we have one shot. And even 10 inches of rain at this point wouldn't make much of a difference in the growth of the grasses. Now, it would help with wildfire danger and filling up the reservoirs and stuff like that, but it wouldn't change the grass. The grass at this point is either dead or it's already headed out, moving on to the next stage of its production, which is reproduction, without which I guess we wouldn't have any uh, crop for next year. Irrigation is the other issue that comes up all the time, and irrigation really isn't an option here. We don't have a river or even a body of water to irrigate out of, and irrigation out of wells is strictly regulated by the state. Anything over an acre of irrigation has to be approved, and in drought, good luck with that. In order to irrigate one acre and supply it with one inch of rain, you need 27,154 gallons of water. The average bathtub, 42 gallons. So that's 650 bathtubs full. Our smallest hay field is about 50 acres. For that, we would need 1.4 million gallons of water per week, more than two Olympic sized swimming pools or 33,000 bathtubs. That's per week. Take that over an entire growing season and we're talking millions and millions of gallons of water pumped from an already taxed and low aquifer and a lot of people that wouldn't get a bath. So while soil health is an issue, it's something that we'll be dealing with over the years to come uh, to basically counteract the effect of this drought, not something that we can deal with during a drought when no rain is gonna be here to help. It's kind of like rebuilding a house while it's still on fire, not gonna work. So next on the email list are the folks that are willing to give us hay to feed the cows, which is great. I mean, we've gotten offers from all over the U.S. Uh, they say, we have hay, we're not going to use it, it may just be wasted, so why not come and get it? You can use it to feed your cows and not have to buy hay yourselves. Free is great, and we all love free, but sometimes the logistics can hurt. And that's something that's free ends up costing more than just paying for it. Here's a good example. Now, I got an email with an offer for free hay from Ohio. They have a truckload of hay that I can get for nothing. 22 tons is what we can normally fit on a single truck. Now, I don't have a truck, so I have to pay our neighbor Gary to go and get it. I'm normally paying about $4, $4.50 a loaded mile for delivery. This hay in Ohio is 1,334 miles away. That's a long way, but it's free, right? The problem is that the trucking, that uh, to get that hay here, I'm paying $6,000 in trucking for that free hay. So that free hay still in fact costs me more than buying hay locally. There are farmers in South Dakota, or even in central Wyoming that can irrigate 300 miles away for example and trucking for them i pay 1350 dollars for trucking per load so if i can keep their prices below 200 dollars a ton which is ridiculous i'm still ahead and well i'm still ahead of that free hay in ohio in fact i'm actually working on hay now for about 150 dollars per ton uh, delivered to the ranch, that would be about $4,600 per load. That's $1,400 less than the free hay. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm incredibly touched and moved by people willing to just send hay our way. But I do have to look at the economics of it. And, and the reality is that, you know, that's what it is. I read every single email we get, and I would encourage anyone willing to give us hay to look around their area and see if there are any other producers who are in need. Try to help them out. Unless you're within 300 miles of us, then let's talk. So that brings me to my main point of the day here, and that's how anyone can help. Farmers and ranchers are not going to have it easy in the near future, trust me. 
all those things that we talked about earlier, trade wars, inflation, manipulation of prices, it's all going to get worse before it gets better. In order to save an industry of small ranchers and farmers, it's going to take, you guessed it, the consumer. Those that want better deals, cheaper meat, breads, and other commodities, yeah, that's us. Those of us that want a lower feed bill, we're the ones that are going to have to change the way that we think. Now, food has value. It's worth more than some of us think. And over the years, we've seen the value of food drop. Factory farms, vertical integration, legislation has brought about lower costs for the consumer. But at what cost? That's what you have to decide for yourself. It's what we had to decide shortly after coming here to the ranch. Was this worth it? Was this life worth protecting and working for? For us, over time, there was really no question. So all I can ask is that we all try. Now, I'm not saying stop buying from your chain grocery store, but maybe once a month, actually you could if you, if you really want to, but maybe once a month you go out and find a local producer to support. Buy some eggs, some honey, maybe a steak. Do that locally. If you want to support us, head to our website. Buy a t-shirt, some jerky, get something in return. But don't forget, just because we have a voice and the ability to talk to thousands, there are producers right in your backyard that, that are experiencing the same exact struggles that we are. It may not be drought, maybe a medical condition and the lack of funds to pay the bills that force a farmer to sell land. But you buy locally. It might be a little bit more expensive. That's why I'm saying start slow. Maybe try a, a fresh egg. Not from the grocery store. It may say farm fresh egg on the carton, but unless a farmer handed it to you, it's not that fresh. And even if you can't taste the difference, which you will, you will have the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping to preserve an industry of small farmers and ranchers that work the land for hundreds of years to get us to the point where you can go buy in bulk at a discount store. And farmers make pennies, while the middleman makes dollars. Talk about shooting yourselves in the foot, right? All right, that's it for me today. I'm going to get off my soapbox, uh, which is what I have to offer the agricultural community. We sell beef, we sell pork, we have t-shirts and jerky, but the most important thing that we can sell here on Our Wyoming Life is an idea. An idea that we hope gets planted and grows and helps a community of people just like us. Those people behind the barbed wire fence, those people on the tractors, those people who stay dirty, and those people we're behind the food that lives in your fridge and your freezers. Thanks, guys, for all your generosity, your ideas, and your offerings to us and to agriculture as a whole. I have a super busy week ahead of me as we gear up for our yearly ranch roundup event where subscribers descend upon the ranch and hang out with us and the cows and get a chance to experience the ranch life for themselves. Virtual tickets are still available if you, if you can't make it. Uh, they're gonna be available for this weekend only. We're gonna cut off sales of those on Monday. So if you want to attend but can't get here, get your virtual tickets and get involved. Guys, thanks again. I'm out of here. But I'll see you next time, right here on our Wyoming Life.